Greetings, and welcome back to Switch to Linux. I got to center myself. I had to make a mad dash up here. It was kind of fun. And, uh, greetings, everybody. How's it going? I'm buffering. Uh, oh, you're buffering. <laughs> yeah, not me this time. Literally, I was less than a mile away. I was getting, I think, 10 down and 2 up. Like, that's not oh. enough to stream with Jitsi at the same time. So I drive half a mile down the street... I have what fifty five down and forty five up, something like that. It's like weird, but hey, at least I know where it was. And I was in the middle of the absolute middle of nowhere in the woods the other day, and I had like the fastest internet I've seen in like a long time. It's like that's okay, whatever. Oh, okay, so, I got the show now. Yeah. I quit buffering. All right, that's good. That's good. We have excellent connection today. Twenty six, twenty seven. Greetings, all. I think this one here might be compelling enough that when we actually start the. Um, Start the fun part of it. Uh, we'll actually record it and uh, uh, release it a little bit more edited for people that want to see it with a little bit more concise without the commentary and such. Um, but anyway, greetings. How's everybody doing today? Dan, how's it going? Busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy, busy. What are you busy with? Peppermint. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm an alpha you tester. Uh-oh. You will have to get you an elf hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Salvu, how you doing? I'm doing fine. Um uh, been doing some uh, uh, system moving uh, uh, the data association uh, uh, that have um, uh, the servers in a university in uh, in Oslo in, in our capital, which okay. is uh, uh, nine hours away uh, from me. Sweet. Um, they have um, uh, the uh, uh, university uh, have a new a new building, so they are moving the. Uh, 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 machine room uh, uh, that they call it into the new uh, so uh, on Monday it, or on uh, uh, Friday uh, last week was was our turn um, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, it was the, f the first time in a long time I think when uh, absolutely every system that we had uh, was uh, shut down and mm -hmm. we were down for uh, seven hours uh, or uh, seven and a half hours. Um, in order to, it's uh, a lot of equipment and it's heavy and so on. Uh -huh. And um, cool. two of the system came up, uh, um, and the two did not come up without in, uh, uh, one of them needed an uh, in, uh, intervention by uh, pressing Control D. And to um, uh, there's a bad raid array on on the on, on the thing that we need to, have, uh, and it's a uh, hardware. I think uh, you need to to do some uh, magic in the BIOS and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, and uh, that one is uh, still not up, um, and there's an old uh, yeah. So I uh, had a um, fun day, but uh, um, half the VMs um, on the uh, VM rig uh, started up. It turned out that um, uh, a lot of them was not uh, configured to start up on on uh, on uh, booting the the uh, main system. So uh, and then I had that uh, fortunately I had a list of uh, what was running before I shut it down. Mm -hmm. So. That sounds fun. So you had a probably a crazier, busier day than most of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ivan, how's it going? Uh, not too bad yourself. Oh, not too too bad. Of course, I've been I've been thinking about some computer adjustments and parts and things. I'm like, let's talk about building a computer for Linux because we talked about buying a computer for Linux. Right. Um, yeah. So I figured we may as well talk about it. Let's go ahead and get right on into it for now, and then we can talk about how crazy the world's going at the end if we want to. Um, but I think we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and record part of this so that we can go ahead and, uh, have a more concise thing. Actually, you know what? I don't know. Maybe we won't even bother. We're only five minutes in. I'll try and remember. Somebody remind me to put a timestamp at the bottom. Like it starts here. Um, but go. we'll do that. Oh, Dan's showing off some bling. What we got, Dan? Hold on. Let me move over. Oh, yeah, I, as soon as I moved over to you, your camera stopped working on my end. <laughs> All right. Um, no, I went and I purchased an, another computer oh, there you go. for it, parts. You're back. Your camera's back. Show us those parts again. Parts? Show us your parts again, Dan. One boned out laptop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Many layers. Does it? Is and it just a case, basically? Or is there... Okay, so there's the... I've replaced those no, before. This yeah, thing is like a superficial... It's like a sandwich. There's like a keyboard on top, then there's like a plastic cover that goes over like an aluminum frame. Mm -hmm. And the circuit board then bolts the aluminum frame, and then you get a ton of junk that goes in the bottom. 
This mm -hmm. is one that's got a um, a changeable CPU. Oh, wow. That's oh, rare yeah. in a laptop. Yeah, and that's yeah. the cooler for it. And nice. it's got a GPU right there, and your Wi-Fi card's going here. So if mm -hmm. you want to get rid of Broadcom and get something else, you can slide it in there, and Sweet. RAM goes in there. Got two RAM I bought this there. one basically for piece, pieces because my other one needed... Um, I think I used to have there. one of that model, that general, yeah, that general is, look. Yeah, I had one of those. This is a Studio 1537. Yeah, I had a Studio. Those were really good. Um, I think I gave it to my mother at one point in time. I don't know. I um, got one. Um, I actually did a search and found out which processor lines I could use with that. And uh, come to find out that you can go up quite a ways in processor speed and size. You know, mm -hmm. if you uh, do a search, because they sold them with very sure. low-powered processors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mine, got, had, I, mine, I remember, it was a good computer. It came with Windows Vista. Um, yes, that's and, what these say. It's got yeah, Vista and, but, but Windows Vista, after it got, like, the service pack, too, it was not all that bad. Um, it was, you know, it, it was what it was, but nevertheless, I'm going to adjust my camera there a little bit. All right, all right let's quite, go ahead and get... Let's go ahead and get into our topic today. We're talking about building a computer for Linux. Now, usually this means a desktop computer of some form. While it is, yes, theoretically possible to build and component laptops, it is significantly uh, more rare and more difficult to do. And so um, we're going to be focusing on desktop computers today because it's the most common. And why might you want to do this? Uh, anyone want to take the lead as to why you might want to do this? I have my own thoughts, but anybody want to jump in on why you might want to build your computer instead of buy it? Um, um, the main reason is that um, you get to, to um, uh, pick uh, the hardware um, and ensure that uh, you, uh, there is uh, uh, driver support for it. Mm-hmm. Yep, driver support. Yep, anybody else? Um, they tend to be a little cheaper to build than to buy one pre-built. Yeah. In it's some cases. True. You can get twice the computer for the same cost if you build it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the cat is an expert at computer builds here. I think she yeah. dropped a deuce too, so I might need to open up the um, fan boy. here. Uh, Ivan, give us some thoughts while I open up the fan. Yeah, finding uh, parts is, I mean, you could like score the miscellaneous parts that you might need for a desktop um i always first thing that always pops into my head is the case itself uh because you need something to hold everything you don't want it all just thrown about your your desk or your table or <laughs> little do like you know that. my friend i will show you what i have later on today <laughs> ah here we are <laughs> yeah but i was thinking of the case because uh, i actually had to get a case for one that i actually built uh Sort of. I mean, it took a pre-built because I took out some of the guesswork and I just got into the case and just transplanted everything over to it. And that is now my Debian edition machine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, building, um, the, we've covered the things, we've covered the cost, we've covered building it to your specific design. All of these are, are good things that uh, indicate why you might want to build your computer for yourself. Um, and it is easier than you think. For the most part, computer design right now, it's like everything is designed to fit into its own little slot. You have to pay attention to things like if you if you only have one graphics card, it has to go into one specific slot. If you have two of a graphics card, you have to put it into the two separate slots. Um, if you have one RAM chip, it needs to go in one specific slot. All this is inside the documentation. It's not all that difficult. If you're like maxing your thing out, it's easy. Just grab all the parts and put them in the slots they fit in. Um, a little bit more complicated than that, but not. it's not hugely complicated. Right. Um, so... Of course, the biggest tool that you're going to want to use is your uh, PC part picker. So just do a, an internet search for PC part picker on your uh, least or most favorite search engine because there's not a good one. Um, let's just stop using the word Google or whatever else. Um, so, <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, now, over here at the System Builder, this is cool because uh, first you'll notice you get a little, uh, a little short code 
thing up here. So everything you do is going to save in this little link. So you can come back to this link later or you can send it to your buddy to be like, this is my cool new computer build. What do you think? Kind of like building magic cards on like the MTG, MTG vault, you know, look at my cool new deck that I'll never buy because I can't afford five black lotuses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um so you come over here and uh you can go in and if anything's conflicting it's gonna tell you uh so you just kind of start by hey click the cpu and look we have a lot of options do you want to go with amd or ryzen so let's talk about this um amd or ryzen guys what do you guys think um, I'm sorry. I just said the same thing. AMD and Ryzen are the same thing. Duh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> AMD or <laughs> Intel. Ryzen or I series. Uh, this, what do you guys well, think? This boils down to what the kernel actually has in it at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And at this point in time, it's kind of a rocky pick because uh, Intel has come out with their new processors where they've got efficiency cores in them. And then mm -hmm. they got main workhorse cores in them. And some of the games yeah. cannot tell them apart. And with Linux, some of the kernels that have came out don't use proper use of this mm -hmm. architecture yet. So yeah, architecture yeah, change, for, you don't want to get something for Linux on a late breaking new architecture. Correct. If, if you if you do want to use the absolute latest and greatest, you're going to limit yourself mostly to Arch. But if you're OK having a little bit older computers which still are going to be amazingly good especially running linux you can pretty much pick whatever you want um anybody else have a general preference though other than just don't buy the latest and greatest if you run or want to run linux without doing a lot of research first uh, my uh i think that uh um if you want something latest and greatest then uh, going intel is uh, all uh, usually uh, uh, a safe bet because um, mm -hmm. um, they are uh, uh, contribute um, uh, a lot of hardware. Yeah. Therefore, uh, uh, people uh, um, uh, coding in, in the, uh, the kernel tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if you if you are going latest and greatest, Intel generally uh, is supported faster than Ryzen is supported. Um, that being said, my personal preference. Um, Ivan, did you want to jump in before we? I guess. Uh, yeah. Question? Yeah, Go sure. Ahead. The um, in my experience, I mean, I've only really been zeroed in on Linux Mint, and what I've had my experience is, uh, I've had a better uh, experience using uh, AMD on that mm -hmm. side of it because it seems a lot that Linux Mint seems to have a lot more towards the AMD sixty four. Uh, architecture and stuff like that mm -hmm. so I've, I've had more success with that than anything else mm -hmm. well a amd 64 gen refers to an intel like a, an intel based system not necessarily arm um or, uh, not necessarily, yeah yeah right. not necessarily uh amd but you know amd or intel just anything that is uh 64 bit systems and things like that yeah. um okay. but yeah that, that and i find the same um when I take my same systems and I run it on, on Ryzen, it tends to run better than when I run it on Intel, yeah. with the, particularly with the latest versions of Linux Mint. Um, yeah. I am having more luck on uh, doing those on, uh, on Ryzen, um, which is a good point. Um, my personal preference, I go Ryzen where I can, um, mostly because there's a little bit more, slightly more shady business stuff on the back end of Intel with the IME. Some people have suggested AMD has something similar. I haven't seen solid evidence of that at this point in time. But if I have a choice, I go with Ryzen. If nothing else, then um, point for point, Ryzen tends to have more... Um, uh, more processing power for a lower cost. When you're comparing cost for cost, you're generally going to get a better value out of Verizon than you are going to be getting it out of a... Um, uh, and, you want to be Intel. careful with the, the Ryzen stuff coming up because it's coming to end a life on the, on the AMD 4 socket architecture and a new yeah. architecture is going to be taking it over and it's going to be with the type where the pins are not on the processor anymore. Mm -hmm. AMD's going with the motherboard pins. Yeah, so same thing as Intel, which, oh, joy, that's going to be very fun. Um, but, yeah, just be aware of that. PC part pickers should do a pretty good job of identifying which boards. Basically, that means you're going to get a board that's going to be uh, specifically compatible. So when you talk about motherboards, your board is going to be specific to your processor. 
Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, go over to PC Parts Picker and uh, let's just go with an AMD. Let's go with this AMD 556 100X. How's that sound? 200 bucks. So we'll go ahead and add that to our system. There so now um, CPU coolers. Your, what's your guys' thoughts on CPU coolers? Ooh, well, you could certainly go with, uh, let's say, if it happens to come with one, you could certainly use the one that comes mm -hmm. in it in the box. Yep. My pre-built, uh, which I got two years ago, it had a, it had a, a, you know, it had the one that came with it as as its uh, CPU cooler. Uh, I, of course, I switched it out to a to a radiator, but uh, it's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it it depends if you want to go with air cooling versus water cooling. Yeah. So. But typically, as far as cost goes, if you get one that comes with the processor and you're okay with air cooling, go with it. Fly with it. Yeah, that's generally my preference. I don't do enough high-end stuff that I necessitate uh, any extra yep. beefy coolant. Uh, if Them you're doing big, huge Noctua um, coolers work excellent even for gaming there mm -hmm. there's a couple guys that's done some comparisons on other channels like jay's who cents and one of them big nachua coolers they don't even get noisy and cool just as well as um a liquid cooled system yeah yeah the liquid and, cools a preference yeah and for me it's like if you're doing if you're overclocking it and doing a lot of super intensive gaming you might want to invest in the liquid cooling um, but if you're not, if you're just doing basic stuff like I'm doing, processing videos and doing live streaming and stuff, you don't generally don't need that. Um, so if you need to save the money, that's a good place to save some. Yeah. Uh, Salvo, any thoughts on coolers? No, I, um, oh. I just use uh, whatever comes with the boxes uh, oh. with the thing. So <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and leave the cooler off. Let's talk, talk about motherboards. Now, once you've decided what process you're going into, you're going to now limit out your uh, motherboards. And so that's why PC Parts Picker, it starts with the processor. So then now everything it shows us is going to be uh, very, um, you know, compatible with the process that we've chosen. So um, as far as motherboards are concerned, um, I personally went with an MSI Gaming 3, uh, 350B, uh, which is not a super high-end board. It's it's uh, a pretty simple, uh, pretty simple, pretty basic uh, board. It does the job I need it to do, and so why bother spending an extra $100 on something else like this one with integrated Wi-Fi, which I will never use because wires man even in the van guys i connect myself into an ethernet network okay i'm not messing with wi-fi hey, <laughs> yeah, even, uh, even uh, like uh, sebastian in this uh, new house yeah uh, he was he uh, uh, wired his, his, uh, his entire house <laughs> yep. yeah that's what i yeah. would do that's what i would do i'm gonna find uh there's a gigabyte anybody have a specific brand you like a uh, gigabyte kind of burned me on the last computer I had, so I intentionally avoid them. Um, probably just just petty nonsense, but uh, I I didn't like their BIOS, is what it was. So, yeah, gigabytes all right. You know, it's like especially if you want to deal with the lower cost and stuff like that. They're good as far as the budget stuff goes. Mm -hmm. uh, my my the this machine that I'm actually running right now for this connection that's a Windows machine uh, that uses oh what is it? It's a tough. Yeah, it uses a TUF tough. Uh, it's because it's a gaming machine, but I use it for video processing as well for my channel. Uh, but uh, yeah, as far as the brands go, yeah, Gigabyte if you have to, but they have had issues in the past. Uh, I haven't had good on. luck with Gigabyte. Yeah, yeah. So like Tough or somebody else along those Tough lines. is a uh, is a is a line of ASUS, ain't it? Yeah. Because I have it, mine's an Asus, a Republic of Gaming, or a Rogue. So every every uh, every gigabyte motherboard I'm throwing on is throwing the error just because like this this Ryzen is extraordinarily new. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap the Ryzen out with something that's not brand new. Out Some of other box. things to consider with motherboards is is the features that you want on them. Do you want USB two and three and C? Do you want Wi-Fi or can you do without Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Bluetooth is another one. This stuff is all built into the motherboards. Do you want to have it all on one or do you want to add it later with a card? Or There's tons of options with this. So mm -hmm. these are things you've got to kind of consider. 
onboard sound. Some of the motherboards have great onboard sound. Mine ain't that great, so I had to get a sound blaster card w- with quality audio because the mm-hmm. sound chip on mine was kind of it was off key a little. Can you still get audio cards? Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> Maybe I should look into that. That'd be fun. Let's experiment with the audio cards. Let's see if let's see if PipeWire can handle them yet. <laughs> you, you know what? It can. It can. It can. Okay. And all you do is go in the BIOS and turn off your onboard audio, and then the card will automatically take over. Nice. I still nice. have uh, in one of the um, uh, moving boxes uh, in uh, one of the rooms upstairs. I still have one uh, 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 old uh, 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 Sound Blaster sixteen. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, Whoa. Had to call those back. Were, yeah. <laughs> those were um, very popular. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and, and they are still good. So, <laughs> so RAM, um, generally, you're not going to have a ton of issues with RAM. I, I think we've encountered one case on the last computer I built where we swapped out the RAM with a different one. I think I'm using uh, G Skill Rip Jaws personally. So, um, I'll go ahead and add that to my, to my build here. Um, so that's kind of, um, memory is memories for the most part, memory again, just make sure you're, uh, looking at your processor and seeing what type of memory it takes. In this case, it's giving me the DDR4, uh, 3200, which is fine. And so, you know, I just went ahead and threw 32 gigabytes onto there. Um, any other thoughts on memory? Um, if you're a gamer, you might want to go a little little h- higher on the clock speed if it lists the clock speed for them. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and that's 32. something. Check the processor, and um, let's see if I can AMDs find thrive at higher clock speeds on the memory, and it really shows in gaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not yes, seeing but- a spot right here. Let me just go to Amazon. And see if I think uh, they're up to four thousand now, something like that. Okay, memory specifications thirty two hundred. So <clears throat> that's what I'd want to do is uh, thirty two hundred on this one. Yeah, so I think de- that's what it, it depends gives. on your attention <clears throat> of the machine. Yep. Yeah. So um, you're going to look into that. Um, I guess one of the things we we should have mentioned earlier. Um, which Linux distribution are you going to work with? Um, of course, uh, if you're using Linux Mint, anything that's not brand stinking new is going to work. Now, the new version of Linux Mint does have a, um, it does have a, uh, what's the what's the name? Everybody remember the name of the one they specifically given it. Um, but it has a newer kernel. So you have the option to download a Linux Mint with a newer kernel shipped with it. Yes. You um, can with Debian too. You can get the latest 5.16 yeah. if you have to have it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, on the, on the Linux mint page on the download, you can do that. All right. Storage, storage. Uh, we have a few options in storage. Um, one of them is what's become very popular is the M2 cards. Um, that's what these ones are right here. Let me see the picture. I don't even own one of them yet. Yeah. So it it pops in here. I actually have a couple of them laying around that I don't even know where they came from. Like they just, (laughs) And on, they, they spontaneously generated themselves in my box of parts, but I actually have some laying around. Um, my one laptop, that's what it's shipped with. And I found it's kind of funny. I can't actually boot off of the first hard drive if there is an M2 chip installed. That is something to keep in mind. And uh, on that computer, I'm actually going to put something else on the secondary hard drive. And so I have to be aware of that. If I'm dual booting or if I'm running uh, like my friend's computer where we gave him two hard drives, one runs Windows, one runs Linux, we did not use these explicitly just so he can turn things on and off easily with an IC dock. Okay. Um, Of course, we have uh, this one looks like spinning rust probably, the Seagate Barracuda. Um, that would be your old traditional hard drive. And then, of course, you have your SSDs. Um, yeah, I still uh, prefer spinning. Uh, them, uh, spinning disks. Yeah, I generally do. There you go. There's a there's an SSD. I generally still prefer... Do, do we want to pay $3,200 so hard SSD? What the hell is this thing? Yeah. What's this? Oh, it's 15.3 terabytes. 
for, oh, for a cool $3,299.99, you too can have a 16 terabyte SSD. <laughs> 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 um, I prefer them. However, when my spinning rust kind of broke out on me a little bit and I went into Walmart, I bought an SSD instead, mostly because an SSD is going to be better for... Um, a vibrating environment like I'm in. And so I thought yeah. it'd be better to convert as many of my discs as I can to SSD. Yeah. And so that's why I bought that. And I got to say, I love it. It's so fast. I, I can it's say so that the, uh, upgrading to an SSD from spinning rust is the single most fastest improvement you can make to your machine. There's none mm -hmm. other that improves your machine like going yeah. to an SSD. And they're getting cheap, which is cool. So... Yeah, like just a few years ago, they were saying like, hey, boost your performance by increasing the RAM. But that's yeah. not the case anymore. You so, just switch out from those Plata drives to the yep. to the SSDs and bang. Absolutely. So this Samsung uh, 870 Evo is 100 bucks. It's a one terabyte SSD. That's about what I paid for mine. Um, SSD is great if you don't have a whole lot of RAM and you need to constantly use yeah. your swap partition. And... Um, that works great with that. It doesn't okay. hang up with, like the hard drives do, swapping out. A few points uh, points to note. Make sure that your Linux distro is trimming. So the first, uh, there's a specific term for that. It's, it's, it's like trim enabled, I think is what it is. I, I forget mm -hmm. all the details. The older versions of Linux Mint did not have this enabled by default, and I think that that's why my SSD, my first SSD, died so fast. The current versions of Linux Mint turn that on. So if you are doing that, look into uh, disk trimming, I think it's called. If anybody knows the specific term, uh, please That's let pretty me much know. it. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's uh, that's something to keep in mind if you're doing an SSD. Also, I prefer if you're running an SSD, make sure you have a better backup strategy because when they go, they go fast. When your yeah. spinning rust goes, you kind of have a little bit of advanced warning about that. You're going to notice it does some weird things and then it's going to die. Um, you want to make sure that you have a good solid backup strategy. Yeah, because you're talking about the difference between something that spins in circles versus it's just there and then it just pops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah, much. The problem, uh, the, the, uh, the problem with the SSD is, is that uh, if uh, there are, uh, on the SSD is uh, several chips that uh, make up the whole drive, and if uh, one of them have a failure, you lose uh, the uh, you lose everything. Whereas on a spinning disk, uh, uh, only the part of the drive uh, um, uh, is uh, will, will be missing in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you have to trim an SSD, the trim is is pseudo FS trim space dash v mm -hmm. yep okay. all right video cards yay <laughs> nvidia all right so with video cards a <laughs> um, few things if you're planning on running linux don't run nvidia unless you really want to open a can of worms um, yeah. It is becoming easier to manage them but it is still not super ideal right now they're so stinking expensive um Man, oh. you know what? I went I went from an AMD card to NVIDIA. If you're a gamer, there is a difference. Is yes, there? Okay. And yeah. did you have any issues getting yours running? No, most of the Linux distros now give you a pathway to get uh, the drivers and stuff for them. And uh, the cards come with additional, the uh, NVIDIA cards come with additional options for direct pipe lining and stuff like that. And they get rid of screen tearing problems and. Mm -hmm. They do. If you want to put in the money and the effort to make them work, they do work. Um, uh, the AMD card I had it was uh, RX 580, which is an obsolete dinosaur by now. But it, it was I had problems with screen tearing and j games jerking and stuff while I'm playing them. And sounds like the GPU is kind of burping. Yeah, yeah. Even There's with a, a 1080 PTI or 1080 RT a GTX yeah. 1080, and, and I know uh, I know pretty much nothing about about graphics cards. It's just 
Um, as long as my system boots, I don't really care all that much. Um, yeah, I'm the same. So. Well, there's certain there's certain video editing programs like DaVinci Resolve mm -hmm. out there. If you're using that to edit your, your video, it prefers yep. that you use an NVIDIA card because it takes yep. full advantage of all the CUDA cores in it. Yeah, so... so Again, think of your application, uh, gaming, uh, video editing, the things you're doing, um, and then let that kind of be your kind of your guide as to what you're doing. And I'm just going to go over here and just do some some sorting if I can. I'm just trying to see if I can do. Um, there's uh, chipsets. Yeah, and uh, as we have said in uh, several um, uh, of these uh, shows. Uh, uh, using an AMD based uh, or uh, anything else than uh, uh, Nvidia, and uh, you will have uh, no problems in uh, getting it to work. Yeah. Um, and uh, 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 Nvidia card is uh, uh, like Dan says, it, it's better in some cases, but uh, um, if you really don't want the hassle of uh, making sure that the drivers work, then uh, don't use an uh, 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 Nvidia card. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Also, if you get a new AMD card, when a newer one comes out, it may not work perfectly when you first get it. It may take mm -hmm. them several months to roll um, better working drivers into the kernel for it. Yeah, yeah. So, again, the graphics card is something you don't want to do the lading, latest cutting edge on Linux unless you're specifically using Arch yeah. or are looking for a fight. All right, I'm going to add the PowerColor ITX because it's 4 gigabyte and it's uh, a Radeon chipset. And uh, I prefer the Radeon chipsets uh, personally. Um, cases. Um, I'll show you what my van case looks like in a little bit. Um, but you can get a variety of form factors. Now, there's, what, three different basic form factors um, for computers. So uh, make sure you know what all you're getting. And um, your, uh, anybody know off the top of your head what the form factors are? There's ATX full, micro ATX, and um, there is the mid not seen this one before. What's that? Oh yeah, they're kind of the newer ones, kind of like the the more compact, flatter type ones. Those are getting out there as well. And uh, I there's tend to, re to consider um, when uh, uh, deciding on the case. Uh, some of us uh, we may not be very many, but some of us still uh, 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 want to use uh, 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 DVDs and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you uh, you need uh, to have a case that um, um, have the possibility of having um, uh, drives on, on the uh, front of yeah. the... Yeah, uh, and, and that is becoming a rare thing, which is a royal pain. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I just added a component I just bought for my system is I looked over my board and I actually had two uh, USB 3.1 hubs and I was only taking advantage of one of them. And I don't have an SD card reader, which is kind of annoying as a video producer. And so I went ahead and bought a, um, it would be basically a front panel. It's a three, uh, three and a half inch front panel uh, device. Just plug right on in, plugs into the an existing USB uh, 3.1 port on the board and gives me SD card readers. So um, I bought one of those. And yeah, if I didn't have a case that had the capability of having extra front ports, I wouldn't be able to use that. Also, it's not just like who uses DVDs anymore. Well, some of us use icy docks and you can't use icy docks either without them. And so nearly every case, you will have a hard time finding a case anymore that actually has CD trays. I'm not sure if we can sort by that or not. Let's see. So side panel windows. Those are cool. Now, my friend's computer, we were able to find one with front ports and a side window uh, panel. So they exist. There's just not a lot of them. So kind of annoying, honestly. That's the most annoying thing about computer builds right now. I think you can sort by, uh, and uh, it's called uh, external five and uh, a quarter inch base. And, uh, uh, oh, uh, is there? I, I uh, didn't uh, see and, it. And uh, many of them have uh, 12 base on the front. <laughs> There's a front USB panel. There's form factors. Oh, wait, hold on. External 5.5. Okay, yes, there is a place to sort for them. So let's go ahead and sort two to five. There we are. There is. There, there is one there. Okay. So we got. 50, 60. This one, actually, I think this is the one we bought for my friend, this Fractal Design Focus G. That looks familiar. I think we might have gotten the button on that one. There's that one. 
So you can find them. Oh, there you go. Corsair. There's a fun one. There's no price on that. So, hey, we can pay 589 for that one, but I'm a cheapskate. So let's go with this $50 one. <laughs> All right. Um, what's next? Uh, power supplies. What's your favorite power supplies, everybody? I tend to like the EVGA ones. Okay. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, thermal take was pretty good until I had one. I bought a new one and it blew up my computer, so I just don't buy thermal take anymore. <laughs> so. um, gigabyte ones will blow up to uh, certain models. Yeah, yeah. I, remember I don't remember. The, uh, I remember the, I had a uh, 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 guest uh, computer at my flat uh, uh, some uh, ten years ago. Um, I woke up. By a, a loud bang uh, from uh, the the direction of the, the and uh, the, it, the smoke came out of the back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> I went to, and, and I knew I had a spare uh, and uh, power supply. So I went into my uh, yeah. room and and replaced it. Mm -hmm. uh, two months later, that also uh, went bust. So uh, I uh, replaced the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, with your power supply, there's a few things to keep in mind. The efficiency rating, you have gold, silver, platinum, bronze, um, and then your wattage. If you're running a ton of extra stuff or a huge beefy graphics card, you want to up your wattage. Also, running a bigger wattage uh, power supply will run a little bit. Um, it will run a little bit better than uh, if you get something really close to your system wattage. It'll run quieter, too. Um, yeah. So uh, keep in mind that uh, for me, I think I'm running a 750 wattage one. Um, uh, so there's a Corsair one. There's, of course, there's a Corsair AXI, which is 1600. So just be aware of your wattages. If you're building a computer system, probably the lowest you're going to want to get is a 650. Uh, you can get them a little cheaper, like your pre-built computers, your small desktop computers. Those are usually like 300 watt power supplies. Um, and uh, this this one here, we could do with what we're experimenting with here. We can do we could do this Corsair 7500 with a gold rating. Let's just go ahead and do that. So um, power supply, not a whole lot. Just make sure you have something that um, I make sure you do the modular ones. And make sure that your power supply matches the form factor of your board. So, actually, I did notice our little tower is an ATX mid tower range. So, this one may or may not fit everything, but it should be fine. We'll go ahead one and important it. fact about modular power supplies is do not mix up the modular cables. Use the ones that come with the power supply yes. only. There is no industry standard for those, so it yeah. is really possible to blow up something if you use cables from another power supply. Correct. Right. All right. You could do something like cable mod, I believe. Yes. Yes. Uh, just make sure you're using the right cables. All right. Operating system. Um, all this stuff is crap. Download Linux. Um, only Salbu, was it you that sent me the uh, the crack for Linux Mint? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody is somebody on a website with a download a crack for Linux Mint. Don't use that. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh it made, boy. It, made, it made a big smile on my face when I saw that. <laughs> yeah, so all this stuff here, all these Windows 10, it's crap. Just go to your favorite Linux distribution and uh, uh, and and grab it. Ew, do I? Can I not like back up? I want to like cancel and back up. How do I cancel? I have to just pick. I have to. Yeah, I'll just one pick one it and delete it. Yeah. Ew, ew, <laughs> ew, 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 ew. Windows 10. Ew. All right, we'll get rid of that. All right. Um. So of course monitors. Do we want to talk monitors or not? My my biggest beef with monitors is nearly every monitor company now is going um, AC instead of DC on the input on the back of the monitor. It drives me crazy um, yeah. because I'm in a mobile environment running DC power. I actually just installed a um, a way that I can charge all my laptops off my house batteries instead of using the stupid AC adapters that came with them. Come on, I'm going as much away from AC power as I can. Where I'm going go. DC around here, man. <laughs> That's what well, I want to do. Monitors are kind of tricky. It depends if you want plain Jane monitors or if you're a gamer. Um, a lot of gamers now like to move up to the 1440 two, or so-called 2K monitors. And I have one, and it, it actually looks fabulous. 
mm -hmm. and it does cool. work well with Linux. All right. Um, my, mine's an uh, HP Omen. Yeah, I do have a friend. One thing to watch out for with your monitor and your graphics card. Make sure that your graphics card and your monitor are compatible. <laughs> So yeah. my friend's my friend's computer. He just took one of my old monitors. I had a pile of monitors when I moved out, uh, moved into the van. So I just gave him one of my monitors laying around. We were in the middle of building a computer. It turns out that his um, his graphics card really only pushes out one frequency that the monitor doesn't like. And so every time he boots into like we we have it fixed now, but if he reinstalls a new Linux distribution, he has to go through and manually change the refresh rate in the display settings. Um, that's something you might encounter. I have never encountered that any other place. Neither um, have I. So it must just be something with his graphics card, which I don't know. But I don't remember which graphics card we got for him. We got him something that was in stock, available, and didn't cost a thousand dollars. So that's kind of why we went with that. Um, all right, and then we got peripherals, all that kind of stuff. Hey, there you go. Sound cards, network adapters, things like that. Um, all those different things we can kind of talk about separately. But since uh, we're kind of running up on time. Um, we'll just go ahead and leave. This is kind of your basics. So now if you want to see what this build is, you can go ahead and go to this particular page. The estimated uh, wattage is about 300 watts. In reality, it's going to be a fraction of that. My computer, when I'm processing a video, only gets up to about 100, 150 watts. Okay. It's not too much different from this system. Our total cost right here for all this, it's a thousand bucks, which is a really good price for... What do you get? A Ryzen 5 3600X, 3.8 gigahertz, six core processor, 32 gigs of RAM, and a terabyte solid state. 32, let's see, 32 gigs of RAM, and um, a Radeon graphics card with four gigabytes. That's a really good price yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I did uh, went through this, uh, uh, and I uh, uh, delib deliberately picked uh, um, uh, like uh, 138 gigs of RAM, and uh, it's a uh, uh, if I had uh, uh, won the lottery, what kind of system would I want? So, yeah, there you um, go. Um, uh, 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 not picking a monitor yet. Uh, Twenty-two hundred. <laughs> Twenty-two hundred. Yeah, there you go. That's not bad. All right. So I want to show you guys, uh, and you guys on the Jitsi call will be delayed, so you'll have to watch the video stream to get the delay. I don't have a way to share the screen easily at the same time. Um, actually, I don't know. I might be able to. Let me go ahead and do that first, you guys. Um, application. Window, that one? Uh, yep, we'll do that. All right, so you guys should be able to see it now. All right, yeah. so this is my van build computer, okay? Um, so some of you are going to think this is amazing and redneck is all get out. Some of you are going to be like, how dare you treat a computer this way? But I, you have been warned. All right, <laughs> so I literally have this guy mounted inside. Now, it is actually on a stabilizing board, which absorbs some of the vibration. So that's some of the stuff. Uh, this is the new port that I just did. I'm not sure if you guys can see my mouse. No, I don't have my mouse turned off. So I was kind of destroyed. The thing that says be easy there, um, I agree with people that logo is a little bit lame, but that's okay. Um, this guy cost me like 20 bucks. It has two USB three ports and the SSDs and type and the Type C USB port. I think they're actually 3.1, not 3.0. Uh, they go. They are incredibly fast, way faster than the other USB ports I have on here. I do have a DVD here, which I use for um, ripping some things. And, of course, my IC dock is under there. You can see I have multiple different drives, and I can boot whichever one. And then I have the FX, uh, XFX uh, graphics card over there. Uh, you can kind of see what that looks like. Uh, here is just a little bit now. This is my brand new power button. Um, sorry, the OCD guys, it's not vertically up and down. I need to replace this washer. I had another one in there, but it was slightly too large and it wouldn't fit. So um, I went ahead and uh, put that on the back. So I'm going to buy a new washer next time I go to town. But uh, my original power button broke. So I bought this guy, which is just totally awesome. It's just like a little power button built on the side of my wall. Uh, you'll see more pictures of that in a bit. And of course, I'm just using my integrated sound and my uh, um, and my uh, uh, Ethernet there. And here's I was trying to get a better picture of the power button. That was a bad picture. There you go. There's a little bit better power yeah. button there. Can I see how it's kind of built in? And here's kind of inside processor over here. Two RAM sticks over here, and then you can kind of see this is where the the power line is back there, and then. You know, you can see where all the power is. I think that's 
about the same picture. And then here is back where the power supply is down there, glowing blue. Motherboard, of course, glows red. And with the new, um, uh, the new uh, panel I have down here that the motherboard mounts on, it gives me a lot more red reflection out of it. So it's starting to look a little bit more blinged out. Um, but that's how I have my system in. And you can't really see it, but right on the very, very um, left of the screen there, where you see that white fuzz there, that's actually a filter. There is a fan mounted on the side of that pegboard there that will blow warm air out of this out the side. So there's an, another uh, fan blowing out. So that's my quote unquote case fan, as it were. <laughs> um, but there is there is my my super red redneck um uh my super redneck uh um uh, uh computer build and uh yeah, uh, you, you, you might like me less because of the, how that's crammed in there. You might like me more. Who knows? It depends on how redneck you are. <laughs> yeah, depending on what you buy, you may be able to recycle one of your old cases and save yourself the money of buying one. That's Yeah, that's what I did last yeah. time I built, built a computer is I just like I kept the case and everything else got replaced. In yeah. uh, 2005, I uh, took, for some reason, took a picture of uh, the uh, uh, computer setup uh, that I had, uh, specifically the monitor and keyboard uh, stand, and uh, uh, this uh, <laughs> nice, yeah, and that, uh, and uh, there are two the CRT original screens. dual monitor setup. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a, a it's a, a CRT screen standing on top of an even bigger CRT screen. <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, the bottom CRT screen was originally from uh, 1994, and it was a Macintosh system. Uh, um, and then nice. uh, ten years later, uh, it looked like this. <laughs> so, nice. One um, one reason you would want to choose Wi-Fi to actually be included on your motherboard. Mine is, and I actually to buy an a, additional Wi-Fi card is if your internet goes down on your landline and you got a phone with a hot spot, you can turn the hot spot on and Linux will pick that up mm -hmm. through the Wi-Fi and now you have internet through well, your phone. While that is true, you can actually do the same thing by just plugging your phone in with the USB cable. It'll record it the same way. Uh, don't with an iPhone. Oh, really? It doesn't? Okay. I Not can't say I I've tried it with the iPhone, but every time I've done that with the Android, in fact, I kind of have sometimes have to fight it to like, don't connect to the phone's internet, stupid. <laughs> I haven't run into that problem. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah that's that's a, a valid point. I do have Wi-Fi, uh, USB Wi-Fi chips laying around. If I need one, I have a couple laying around. Um, but personally, I don't use Wi-Fi much at all, and I'd rather it just not be there at all as an extra security risk. So I did say, um, uh, was it uh, PC, the Jeff Foxworthy edition? Absolutely. And yes, I'm in living in a van looking for aliens. And you can see that. Actually, I was absconding with the aliens a couple weeks ago on uh, Tux Traveler. Have a look at my travel channel. You can see a lot more about my van build and uh, where I go with it. And I did one on Roswell, New Mexico the other day. Um, what did I do yet last week? Oh, I did the beach earlier this week, and I'll be doing some of the uh, modifications of the van this week. Um, we're going to go up to the comments. If anybody sees comments, I'm going to go way up to the beginning because I didn't cover, excuse me, didn't cover them yet. Um, so if anybody sees any specific comments you'd like to uh, read, go ahead and do that. Well, I'm, I'm going to start from the top and go down. Yeah, uh, we have probably. 51 people on today, so yeah, absolutely. Well, greetings, yeah. everybody. Yeah, we've had that's more than we've had for a while. So, one thing oh, some thumbs up with that. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, one thing that, uh, that I would do, uh, uh, if I was to redesign my uh setup, uh, uh and then uh, uh, um, having the money and so on, is to have uh, one of those uh, uh monitor stands where you, you have uh, one uh, base and then you have uh, uh, multiple monitors on top of that single one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, I don't have that, but um, uh, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah. Um, Jeff, uh, Jeff Wall Street, uh, Jeff W. Um, says, interesting, why is there a tow truck hooking out of the van? You should ask, why is there a deceased tow truck? Op Never mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the joys of mobile internet. That's right. That's right. Hello, Patrick. Present arms. Greetings. 
Hello, Leo. Anchorage, five out of five by five. Greetings, greetings, greetings. All right. Yeah, sorry to get to the comments earlier. I want to get right on into that for people that are jumping in later. I realize this is probably more of a hotter topic than some of the other ones you do. 25 will leave when the stream starts, probably. <laughs> in Fedora Cinnamon for a while now. Very good. I think Fedora's another good one if you want to run the latest hardware because they do a really good job of keeping up to date on stuff as well. Tired and feet hurt. Uh-oh, and had to mow the lawns. All right. Uh, let's see. My first Trinity OS was seven years ago. Greetings, Moonbase Alpha Grays. How's it going there? Integrated graphics, most likely. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd say, like, if you're not doing anything really fancy with needing in Linux, you know, if you're just staying within just, you know, something to check email and, you know, daily driver type stuff where you don't need a whole lot of performance. If if the CPU has integrated graphics, then you should be able to just go yeah. fly with that and save yourself the money of getting a separate card of who knows how much you'd have to spend for it. Yeah, right I, I, I do that in my main system. I use the integrated um, uh, in, uh, uh, inter, mm -hmm. inter graphics. Yeah, as long as you're not doing anything beefy. I can't really usually do that with video production stuff, but right. for my basic YouTube stuff, oh, yeah. Like, my media PC is totally awesome, you know. Um, Paolo is, is it Paolo, uh, says the kitchen background looks straight out of Pavre. Well, you know, I it's my kitchen, my bedroom, my office. What do you want, you know? <laughs> yeah, unless it is my kitchen. It's convertible. That's right. And it's on wheels, too. Mm, mm, just bought a Lenovo Legion. There's your problem. You own a Dell. What? Hey, 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 hey! Shots are fired! Shots are fired! I like my Dells. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I like about Dells, as we talked about in a previous stream, is they're so repairable. Yeah. I just showed you one in pieces mm. that I needed some parts out of. Yeah. Yeah. There is Dell and there is Adel. Mm, Dell and other. That's right. No, 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 Adele and Adele. Oh, Adele and Adele. Okay, I gotcha. <laughs> now I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Uh, AMD and Rise are the same. Yep. <laughs> hey, fortunately, I caught that before before I read your comment. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> um, stay away from NVIDIA these days. Yeah. Uh, Ryzen 5 5800H runs like a scolded cat. <laughs> hey, Kitty, come here. I'm going to scold you. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph uh, Norris was saying he has a 49 inch super ultra wide 38 by 40 by 1080 monitor he had like to throw in the extra little uh, characteristics of uh, plus extra absorbency because something that wide it's like yeah you want to see when you're done I remember uh, a few months ago uh uh, London's Tech Tips uh, tested the uh, uh, very first uh, 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 really wide screen uh, monitor, and it was mm -hmm. uh, a CRT screen. They paid, I think, they paid uh, ten thousand uh, dollars for it, um, and it it worked uh, fine. Uh, the only thing was that it was uh, uh, several uh, uh, screens uh, uh, packed together, um, so you could see it, um, uh, if you, if you looked for it, you could see. Uh, where the screen was uh, spliced together inside mm. that. Um, here's a good question. Uh, not a gamer, but would like to build a beefy system where I could use a VM without bogging me down. Any recommendations? Um, I would say your biggest thing uh, with VMs is make sure you have a lot of RAM. Um, yeah. the, the VMs are going to be limited in how much uh, video memory you can give them anyway, unless you're doing a, a GPU pass through. Um, but your RAM is really what's going to get in your VMs way. So make sure that you deck out your RAM as high as you yeah, can. Yeah, and also the, uh, uh, the number of CPU cores. Yes, you'll mm. need the extra CPU cores. Yep. I would recommend Correct. that you at least get something that has um, eight cores. Yep. Yeah, Do um, my rule of thumb is uh, uh, at least one core per uh, virtual machine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I usually... well. I usually give most of my virtual machines two to four cores, depending on the type of Linux distro I'm working on. And um, I, 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 I feel more comfortable since I got 32 gigs of RAM in this machine because I can open up two web browsers, tons of tabs in both of them, and still run two virtual <coughs> machines and game all at the same time. 
Yeah. yeah. Linux does yeah. that really well or Windows will start to stumble. <laughs> yeah, this this system here, I give my VM6 cores when I'm testing them uh, for you guys to see them. That works works out well. So uh, Let's see if there's any more down here. Watch out for that 15 terabyte drive. It reads it as a 6 terabyte drive. Really? Huh, that's fun. Yeah, in my uh, swap partitions. Uh, what part of the 2010s are you living in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if in my setup, in, I uh, opted for the uh, 20 terabyte drive. If you're going to get into gaming, you need that kind of storage. You need multiple terabytes of storage because you don't buy the games anymore on DVDs or Blu rays because they don't fit no more. You have to download them, and some of them, some of them are well over 100 gigabytes in size, if you know. Yeah, um, a, a friend of mine, uh, yeah, uh, one or two years ago, he, he bought a game uh, um, at, at a store as a DVD, uh, and it was uh, for four gigabytes that it wanted to, to install. And after installing the game, it still wanted to download an additional eight gigabytes. So, nine. oh my goodness! Yeah, that's that's why I'm glad I'm not a gamer in the van. I mean, I only have a hundred gig, hundred and fifty well, gigabytes a month anyway. <laughs> The thing about modern games are the really good triple A ones is you're actually playing a person in a movie and you're yeah. writing the movie as you're going through it. Yeah. So the games like this is a whole uh, uh, different story. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 Do, 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 right, Kelvin gives me an, an awesome setup. Uh, anybody else going to tell me I'm a lunatic? <laughs> <laughs> Hello from Roswell. Well, greetings. Yes, I was there not long ago. You can tether an iPhone to Linux, Bruce Lee says, but not every distro supports it. Okay. Oh, check, Dan. Um, there is actually some extra utilities specific for uh, doing things with iPhones. Check those, too. Since I don't run iPhones anymore, I couldn't tell you. Uh, well, the one I have, I've had ever since I've known you, and it's still going strong, and it still gets updates. There you go. So I got, I've got, I've, I'm getting my money out of it big time. So the lights are physical. Die tonight. All right. Hey, I've gotten to the bottom of the comments. All right. <laughs> hey, and we're right about eight o'clock. So let's go ahead and uh, do our wrap up. Stan, what's your final words? Um, my final words is um, pick the stuff that you want for your uh, PC that you're going to build. Make a list of all the stuff you want in your hardware. Um, okay. You want to make sure that you get your CPU and your motherboards matched. I made a kind of a mistake when I picked mine. I spent, I needed an X470, and when I went to Micro Seven Center, I told the guy wanted an X370, and he said, well, that'll work with your CPU, but you'll have to flash the BIOS first. Mm. And I'm like, okay, do you have something that will work with this CPU? <clears throat> And he got me the right motherboard, and that was the only mistake okay. I made. But, yeah. you know, uh, sit down, write down, you know, do you want USB-C? Do you need this? Do you need Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. Do you need, you need Bluetooth? Now, I got a laptop I bought. I didn't know it came with Bluetooth. But when I found out it did have Bluetooth, it was really cool. I put on my JBL Bluetooth headphones and walk around the house and listen to my laptop. Nice. Nice. Linux does support that. Yeah, I know one of my Linux computers, or one of my laptops has Bluetooth. I don't remember if the other one does or not. Yeah, you got to install Blue Man and then the Blues drivers. I always disable it because I don't even use Bluetooth for things on, on that. You know, so I'm like, eh. um, It's really nice when I want to listen to some music and I got the yeah. headphones on and I'm cooking in the kitchen I'm, or something. I'm like that. probably later on this summer, I'm going to have to make sure it's working because I'm going to go down to the camp again. <laughs> And that's the one thing we didn't have before. It's like, do we have like speakers on here or nobody has speakers? Well, my friend gave me um, a Bluetooth or a, a Bluetooth speaker. I'm like, well, it sounds really good. Um, mm -hmm. I don't generally have a use for it, but I'm like, man, I'm going to take that to camp and, uh, you know, I can, I can run speakers, you know, I can put that closer to the kids and, 
you know they'll be able to hear a lot better than uh, uh, than they would otherwise. So, yeah. Um, uh, Ivan, give us your final thoughts. Uh, yeah, well, I think the only, one of the only things I can think of is to say, you know, if you're going to build your own, you know, it's like you want to make sure your motherboard fits in your case. That's like the big thing right there. You don't want to get, uh, let's say, like an EATX, a really big one, and end up with a micro, with a mini or macro ATX case that's only yay mm-hmm. big. Because yep. you go to put that in and be like, uh, okay, now what? Fit. Right, exactly. You're, you're, you supposed, make sure to, your you're supposed to take fits. the board and snap pieces off until it fits. <laughs> don't do that that breaks it <laughs> yeah those perforations are there for a reason <laughs> oh okay all right <laughs> yeah yeah just make sure you have the right size yeah uh salvu final thoughts yeah so um uh, i don't uh build my own systems i uh, buy them and uh, pre-built uh, uh because um i don't uh, uh i'm not interested in uh, hardware I'm, 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 uh, I'm just using it I mm-hmm. only know that uh, some hardware works better on Linux than other hardware, and uh, yeah. that as far as. Uh, so, uh, but uh, um, there is some, uh, uh, even uh, pre built ones can be uh, not very good uh, on, on Linux. My main system I bought in um, uh, December of uh, 2012. And it was uh, for the first uh, half, uh, four or five months, it was uh, 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 unstable. It crashed at least once a week and uh, for no reason. And it turned out um, uh, it was the uh, uh, NVIDIA card that they came with it. I didn't know the difference uh, back mm-hmm. then. So uh, it has an uh, integrated uh, 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 Intel graphics. So I, I removed the uh, uh, NVIDIA card and it has been stable ever since. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get rid of that NVIDIA and it works. All right. So, yeah, it's um, definitely look into into it if you're in the market for a new computer, particularly desktop, because it is a lot cheaper. Uh, you can get a lot more for it. The experience is fun. And it's not all that difficult uh, to build your own system. So, uh, for me, and you know, I experiment around a lot, as you can tell. I don't even have an official case. I've got, you know, stuff up here. Literally, you're a like, closet I've, build. I've, I've, I mean, I've put some weird stuff. There's some bolts up here holding up some stuff. I have an L bracket holding up that other thing there. And I even have the motherboard tied down to a block of wood with some string. <laughs> I remember, I mean, we went all oh, redneck on this bad boy. <laughs> a friend of mine had uh, one uh, uh, build uh, like that uh, 15 years ago. He had a motherboard uh, and uh, the internals. Uh, and he had uh, screwed them onto uh, 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 an old uh, um, uh, plank laying around. So obviously he named the computer uh, Plankium. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and so, one, um, reason for, uh, 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 one benefit of uh, building your own system is uh, you know how everything works. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, you, uh, you know uh, where every cable goes. Uh, uh, so if you need to replace something... Uh, you almost always will know uh, uh, how to open it and uh, what to uh, what you need to uh, take apart in order to get to what you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's uh, good. Good thoughts. Um, I will be streaming again on the Christian channel tonight, where you'll be talking about does God hate our worship. We're gonna be looking at some of that. Uh, so I dropped the link in the comments for that if you guys want to jump on over there uh, and watch us discuss uh, the Christianity type stuff. Um, otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow with the weekly news roundup, and it'll be a fun time. So we will catch you guys later, and thanks for hanging out. Bye, everyone. <laughs>